Hello everyone, welcome back to Fulgurn Gaming's Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In this episode, I've decided instead of going for the Big Oron Sword, or however you would pronounce that, I'm actually going to complete the Ice Cavern, because it is right here. And you also, to be able to get the Big Oron Sword, you actually have to, you know, complete the Ice Cavern to some extent. So I might as well go ahead and do this. Now if you didn't catch that, I used that Jump Slash trick there to get in here. The Ice Cavern... I don't know, it's just not a really- I don't really like the dungeon, I'm not sure why, it's kinda- it's not- I don't classify it and I don't think they meant it to be like a, a big dungeon. Obviously there's no medall medallion gotten for completing it, it's required to beat the game because you have to get an item in here to beat the water temple, but as far as, you know, the mechanics of the dungeon, there's like one puzzle and there's a couple enemies, so I'm not even gonna go for the map and the compass because I don't think they're that necessary. Now, to get through these bars, I've got to complete, or defeat, there we go, I was wondering where that last guy was at. You have to complete, oh my god, there's that word again, defeat all of the enemies in that room. And if you get a, you can also use Din's fire right there to make it a little bit easier. But yeah, like, as a kid, I, I don't remember this dungeon, it's just so forgettable, I think, that it's just not even, like, whoa, some flying pots, like, there's nothing really about this dungeon that I can remember, it's, like I said, forgettable. Except, you know, the end of the dungeon is actually kind of cool, and I think I kind of- what in the world is going on here? I think I was glitched into the wall a little bit or something like that. I do remember, actually, that thing in the middle right there always used to kill me, because I guess I was a little bit impatient, and I wouldn't, you know, wait for it to go by, I would just run straight through it. And apparently nothing has changed. Now, I think there are five silver rupees, I'm not exactly sure, and whenever I say silver, uh, silver something lately, it reminds me of that show back in the day, what was that thing called? Legends of the Hidden Temple, I think, that was like, I was gonna say mini game, it was that game show where, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, that show was like the best game show I've ever seen, but they had a whole bunch of teams and one was the silver, no! I forgot what it, the silver referred, I think, to the Shrine of the Silver Monkey or something like that, where they had to go in there and do something. Like I said, that was a long time ago, don't really remember it too much. Now, we have, I think, either the map or the compass is in, is in this room right here. But, it's not necessary, like, the, I was gonna say the temple, the dungeon's like five minutes long. It's not really worth going for the map and the compass. And these keys right here are probably some of the most annoying enemies in the entire game. Because if they run into you like that, they freeze you. It's pretty cool though, because for whatever reason, you can... I just caught a pun, by the way, it's pretty cool. Oh my goodness, that's horrible. But anyway, you can lock onto those... Actually, you can't lock onto those ice things, but what you can do is use the hookshot for whatever reason and lock onto them. Anyway, I have four bottles that I'm going to go ahead and fill up with blue fire, which is right in front of me. And the blue fire can be used to melt a whole lot of stuff. Well, actually, really only one thing that's... Oh, come on. Wow, that takes away a lot of health, I just realized. But, let me go ahead and pause to, so I can explain this real quick. It... well, maybe not. I'll just go ahead and fill this up. But it can melt that red, you know, encasing... I don't think that's ice. Maybe it is red ice. I'm not sure. But it can... that's like the only thing it can melt it. And if you guys saw... King Zora, he was encased in that red ice or whatever, so this is the material right here we need to actually do the Big Oron's quest. So we can do that right now, but we're in here already, so we might as well finish the dungeon here. I think that's either the map or the compass, I believe it's the map, I don't remember, but I'm not gonna waste, you know, time going back and filling up my bottles with fire and stuff. And now that I think about it, it's kind of weird that you can even fill up a bottle with fire in the first place. And I hope I don't die in here, by the way. I've been taking a lot of silly damage, and I actually, like I said, I used to die a lot in this dungeon. Maybe that's why I don't like it. It's like repressed memories. I swear. Like, I would just go right onto that thing, wouldn't I? Now, there's one, I think it's that red ice over here that I need to go in to get a, a either a piece of heart Actually, I think there's a piece of heart and a gold skull toll in here, so let's go ahead and check. And I, if I remember correctly, I think that one chest that I passed up a while back, or not, you know, in the last room or whatever, I believe that was the the map, and this room has the compass. Yep, it's right there. There's the compass, I believe. So, like I said, not going to get that. But what we can do is go ahead and... I hope I'm close enough to this red ice for it to melt, by the way. 
Luckily, if, when we get this piece of heart, our health is going to, you know, fill all the way back up. If this is the room, I believe, yes it is. I will actually speed this up because it's a puzzle and I'm not sure if I remember how to do it, but I do know how to do it like a sort of a cheating, glitching way, which I will show you after I'm done doing it the legitimate way. Alright, I didn't think that was going to work. I thought I was going to have to reset the ice block to get up, to up here. Now, obviously you have to have blue fire to open this, but I've seen a glitch you can actually kind of jump into this and get it like that. And I just, I don't know why every time I see stuff like that, it just fascinates me because I don't know. Back in the day, I didn't know anything about all these glitches and stuff like that. And just to see the that you were able to do stuff like that it's just so it's new to me even now what I wanted to show you was you can actually do bomb jumps in here like so and you can do this bomb jump to get on any of the platforms in this room with rupee on them those are silver rupees by the way not sure how much those are worth but you can get a, use a bomb jump to get up here let me go ahead and demonstrate There we go, see? You can do this, like I said, on any of these pillars on the room to get up there, to get up on any of these places you can do that. So let's go ahead and use that trick to continue with the dungeon, shall we? I'm not sure if I did that one right. Oh, apparently I did! Now you do have to have blue fire to continue here, and that's kind of cheat. like you'll- Wow, how do arrows not hurt these things? But the hook shot does. That makes no sense. But anyway, you have to have blue, yeah, blue fire. I was gonna say red fire to get through here. But if you get over here and you don't realize that you don't have any blue fire, then you have to go through the whole puzzle, you know, puzzle again to get through it. And also, you have to get those five rupees to even have this place open up because I think there's like bars in front of it or something. So they really tried to help or not help you, prevent you from defeating the dungeon. I think. Now, I believe, yep, this is going to be the last room in the dungeon. You know what? Let's go ahead and take him out in one hit. There we go. Not quite one hit, but, you know, not too bad. Now, it seems like, you know what? Wolves are a really big part of this game, it seems like. Or not wolves. What, what are those called? Wolfos, actually? I mean, they were in the Sacred Forest Meadow. They were at the beginning of the Fire Temple, they were right here, obviously. In this treasure chest, we have a boot upgrade, or not really an upgrade, just an alternative, I guess, the Iron Boots. So, have you can't run, and you can't float either. We meet again, Kyle. If you came here to meet the Zoras, you wasted your time. This is all there is. With one exception, the Zoras are now sealed under this thick ice sheet. I guess that's where I got that in the last episode where I said, oh, I thought they were under the ice. I managed to rescue the Zora Princess from under the ice, but she left to head for the Water Temple. This ice is created by an evil curse. The monster in the Water Temple is the source of the curse. Unless you shut off the source, this ice will never melt. If you have courage enough to confront the danger and save the Zoras, I will teach you the melody that leads to the temple. Time passes, people move, like a river's flow it never ends. A childish mind will turn to noble ambition, young love will become deep affection. The clear water's surface reflects growth. Now listen to the serenade of water to reflect upon yourself.
And just like that, we have learned the Serenade of Water, which I think is probably the shortest song in the game. Kyle, I'll see you again. Do the Deku Nut thing? Yes. I wish I could do that. That's like, I just find that really cool for some reason. But yep, yeah, the Serenade of Water is only five notes, unlike most of the songs in the game are six. And the Bolero, Bolero Fire is actually, what am I doing here? I need to change it to my iron boots. The... That song is actually eight notes, so I kind of like the fact that they switched it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and open this door. What I used to do as a kid would actually, I would just skip, you know, all this. I wouldn't even come back because I didn't even know that door was there. Is this a way to get out, by the way? I might as well go ahead and take, take the iron boots off. But what I would usually do at that point is play that song and just warp immediately to the water temple and just not worry about anything that was behind me. But the reason they put that door there, I guess, or not door, but you know, well actually it was a door underwater. They put it there so you could come back and unfreeze King Zora, I guess. I better have, okay I was gonna say, I better have some blue ice. And the reason you want to do that is he actually gives you a free Zora tunic, which if you don't know what it does, it actually allows you to breathe underwater, so if you have the iron boots on or whatever, you don't have to worry about, you know, however long you're underwater. And I think there's a heart piece somewhere in the middle of Zora's Fountain, which I will go for as soon as I get the the Zora tunic. I'll put that on in the iron boots and go down there and look around. But let's go ahead and unfreeze King Zora. Oh, I've come back to life! Was it you who saved me? Don't be nervous. It looks like you have a hard time breathing underwater. As an expression of my gratitude, I grant you this tunic. With this, you won't choke underwater. Alright, I like how we have gotten pretty much, no not pretty much, every tunic or all three of them in the game so far, we have gotten for free. We haven't had to pay for the fire tunic. We found the Goron, or we had the Kokiri tunic on when we, you know, were, when we started the game, and we just got the Zora tunic. I was about to say found because it was on the screen. But you can buy them if you don't know how to get them for free. I don't know if you ever actually have to unfreeze King Zora or not, but you might as well go ahead and get them for free if you can. If you don't, or if you can't find how, how to get them for free, I think you can buy... Where are they at? I think you can buy them in the Zora shop and the Goron shop, wouldn't that make sense? Alright guys, here we are at the bottom of Zora's Fountain. I bet you guys didn't think it was this deep. And all the way down here, they reward you with a piece of heart. So, is that going to be enough for another heart container? Uh, unfortunately not. But as for this episode, guys, it's kind of short, I know. But all I planned to do for this episode was do this. In the next episode, I believe we are going to be going for the Big Goron Sword. Which is actually more powerful than, than the Master Sword. So I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And I want to see you guys back for the next episode.